Hi guys, this is Victor with DIY Time, and in this video I'm going to show you how to diagnose and fix the ABS warning light on your car. So recently, all of a sudden, I've got the ABS warning light on the dashboard of my 2007 Nissan Altima. I'm going to show you the troubleshooting steps that I took to fix this problem, and if you follow this method, you might be able to fix the same issue on many other cars as well. Also, if you're interested in any of the tools I'm going to be using in this video, I'm going to list them all in the description area below. And just a heads up, I think I already know what's going on here, because here's what I found just a few days ago. I haven't been driving this car for a while, and looks like some animal decided to build its nice little house in here. To make this troubleshooting a lot easier, the very first thing we want to do is read the ABS error code that's stored in the ECU every time when ABS light comes on. And to do that, we're going to be using a diagnostic scanner tool. Now, keep in mind that not all of the scanners are capable of reading ABS error codes, and most of the basic entry-level scanners can't do that. So be sure to use a good scanner that can get the job done. I'm personally using this blue driver scanner. It works great and it supports many different car brands. So. Once again, if you're interested, the link will be in the description area below. We're going to plug in the diagnostic scanner into the OBD2 port that's usually located under the steering wheel. Next, we're going to wirelessly connect to a smartphone or a tablet and read the ABS error codes using the Blue Driver app. So we've got one ABS error code here, C1103, front right sensor 1. And this is a very helpful information because there are four different sensors on this car, one for each wheel, two in the front and two in the back. And now we know exactly where to look for the problem, which is a front right passenger side of the car. Also right inside this app we can get the error code definition, as well as frequently reported fixes for the problem, which can give you a pretty good idea what could be wrong with your car. For example, in my case, Possible solutions could be replacing the right front wheel speed sensor, repairing the sensor wiring harness, repositioning the sensor wiring harness, or replacing the rear speed sensor if you're also getting error messages C1101, C1102, or C1104. And this is why I really like this tool, because first of all it's very capable, and second, they actually have a group of people constantly adding to and updating the database of possible fixes for various error codes, which could be a very helpful troubleshooting resource. Now let's go ahead and safely jack up the car, remove the front right wheel and take a look at the wheel speed sensor. I always like to keep the wheel and the floor jack under the car for extra safety in case the jack stands fail. Here's the location of the ABS sensor. It's attached to the steering knuckle with a 10 mm bolt and there's a wire coming out of it that goes around the strut and it makes its way behind the splash cover and into the engine bay. We're gonna remove the plastic fastener to reveal the electrical connector for the sensor. A lot of times, especially if your car is older, these fasteners break when you take them out, so you can just buy a whole box of these for a few dollars and replace them if necessary. If we pull back the splash cover, we can see the electrical connector right behind it. Depress the plastic tab to unplug the connector. And then plug it back in and make sure it's sitting tight in place. Start the car and if you're lucky, ABS light should disappear. If not, move on to the next step. Next, we're going to take out and visually inspect the ABS sensor. We're going to look for any obvious signs of physical damage to the ABS sensor wire and the electrical connector. If your ABS sensor is damaged, go ahead and replace it with a new one, 
but in my case I couldn't find anything wrong with it so I'm just gonna move on to the next troubleshooting step. Before we can do any further testing we need to be aware that there are two types of ABS sensors out there, active and passive. Passive ABS sensors were used in older vehicles, but most of the cars nowadays use active ABS sensors, because they give more accurate readings at the lower speeds. In very simple terms, the passive ABS sensor works like a little generator that creates electric current when the car is moving. The higher the speed, the higher the value of the electric current. And then that signal is sent to the ABS ECU computer that can determine the speed of the vehicle based on the value of the electric current. You can easily test passive ABS sensor by measuring its resistance and then compare it to the original factory specs. Also you can connect it to a multimeter and check if it's generating any electricity when you spin the wheel. Active ABS sensor, on the other hand, is working by totally different principles. It's constantly getting power from the car alternator when the car is turned on and for that reason we won't be able to test it using the same methods we used for passive ABS sensor. Instead what I did is I removed the good known working sensor from the left side of the car and since both front sensors are exactly the same, they have the same part number, cable length and electrical connectors. I swapped the left and right side sensors. Next I connected to the car ECU and cleared the existing ABS error code. Then I turned off the car, waited for a few seconds and then turned it back on again. And then rescanned the ECU again for the ABS error codes. After we changed the ABS sensor sides, if the error code indicates the problem on the opposite side, then we definitely know it's a bad ABS sensor and it needs to be replaced but if the error code stays the same even after you swap the sensors, then you've got a totally different problem. In my case, the error code stayed the same and for that reason I'm suspecting a problem with the electric circuit. I'm gonna use a multimeter to test continuity of the ABS sensor electric circuit. I used two needles as test leads for the ABS sensor electrical connector. Then I plugged it into the wire harness, started the car and connected the test leads to the multimeter to test the electric current. This is how it looks on the good working left side of the car so we can get an idea what we're looking for. We're getting almost 12 volts here and this is normal, this is the way it should be. Then I moved on to the other side and did the same exact test and I've got nothing. There was no continuity in the electric circuit which tells me that the power doesn't even get to this ABS sensor. I started following the sensor wires past the wire harness and sure enough right where they enter the engine bay I found something unusual. It looked like the rat or other animal that was living here chewed the mop and both wires were exposed in a couple places. Here's another view of this from a different angle. Also notice this black tape that bonds two wires together. When I removed it I discovered that the black wire was actually damaged which explains why there was no continuity in this electric circuit. Here's another view of the same broken wire. I wasn't sure if the wires were damaged anywhere else, so to test it I connected the broken wire using alligator clips and then started the car. The ABS light was no longer there, which proves this was the only breakpoint in the electric circuit. So in the end I just had to repair the broken wire and I also had to clear the ABS error code from the ECU. I hope this was helpful and if you still have any questions please visit my ABS Fix webpage for additional information that's beyond the scope of this video. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel to see more car repair videos like this. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.